Hi all, it's Teresa in Gemma's house. Well, I'm feeling like it's time for another quilt video. And thank you to everyone who viewed my quilt show video and subscribed. I really appreciate it. That really helped out my channel as far as subscribers and view hours. So thanks again. So once again, I want to try to use up the scraps that I have. I haven't bought fabric for close to a whole year because I have too many scraps for my standards and too many fat quarters and remnant pieces. And I know that a lot of quilters have way bigger scrap collections, but for me, I don't want to have so many scraps laying around before I start buying more fabric. And from the scrap quilts that I made, it's so satisfying and I get a real sense of accomplishment when I use up a lot of my scraps and make a brand new quilt with no extra expense. So looking at the scraps that I had, this bin is all reds, yellows, whites, and oranges, and some black and white pieces but this is all i have left of the blue greens so i am committed to using these up and then i'll only have these remnant pieces of fabrics some that i had cut into strips for other quilts that i had made and my fat quarter collection and i want to save these for making another quilt so i don't want to dig into these before i finish getting rid of all of my small scraps so my next project is to basically make scrap fabric using as many of my scraps as I can and make a pillow cover for this couch pillow. And this is one of those feather down filled pillows, which is my favorite for using on the couch. This is the last scrap quilt that I made, a crazy scrap quilt, and I just really love it. As you can see, I had all the yellows and reds and oranges and whites in the middle section and then framed that with the blues. So I think focusing on the blues to make the pillow covers would be nice to go along with this crazy scrap quilt. And before I made that crazy scrap quilt, I had made three blankets for Gemma using some more of my scraps. So you see how many quilts I got out of my scraps so far. And I just love these blue combinations. So that's another reason I want to use up my blue scraps. Okay, so recently I've been having some lower back stiffness from sitting. So I decided to use my artist's drafting table that's at an adjustable height. And I'm going to put the sewing machine up on this and I'm going to stand while I sew. I think that will be a little better for right now. Okay, so looking at the different colors and patterns I have left in these scraps, most of these are rectangular pieces. So I'm going to have to cut some into triangle shapes and long strips and maybe some squares to match the look and feel of the crazy scrap quilt I made for the couch. Okay, so I have much smaller pieces and that will tie in with the look of that quilt that I made. Okay, so I'll stop here to show you what I usually do when I'm piecing for a crazy quilt pattern. 
I don't iron in between. I just fold the fabric over and press it down with my fingernail. And that works really great until you have a bigger piece that you can just take to the ironing board then. I trim off any big pieces that were in seams. And I find that I don't use a quarter inch seam. Uh, I use a seam that's more like an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch because when I'm finished I free motion quilt over top of this so it tends to keep the seams intact then and it doesn't fall apart and I try to have a good mixture of different patterns and colors so that it's not real heavy blues or greens in any one area Okay, so I'll stop here to show you what I've made. I don't just make pieces that are perfectly rectangular or square. Sometimes I have an edge like this that is a diagonal. And like this one too. Hi Gemma. This one here will have to make its way over to this diagonal some way. So what I'm going to do is start piecing some more pieces here, join it along this line, and then I can join that diagonal first, flip it over, and then sew it here. I've done that a lot when I was making that scrap quilt, and I think it gives it a more crazy haphazard look, which is what I like. I do have this other piece too that I'm trying to figure out this corner and what I'm going to do is just sew this piece at a diagonal, flip it over and then I can cut it. Okay, so I got to this part where I want to join these pieces all together. So what I'm going to do first is sew these two pieces together. And also, if I have a heavier piece of fabric like this denim, I'll make sure that that's at the bottom and I'll fold the other fabrics down over top of it because they're more lightweight, so it will fold better that way. And then I finger press it. So now I want to join this piece to here. I want to keep this diagonal because I like using diagonals in the crazy quilts. I think they make for a, a better craziness <laughs> instead of all straight lines. So I'm going to lay this one on top of this one and cut a diagonal line through both of them. And you could flip these two onto each other and pin it if you want, so you don't get confused about which way it goes. I'm going to sew down to this point right here, which is about a quarter of an inch down from the edge of the fabric. And now I just have to sew these two together. And again, Turn them onto each other and you can pin this if you want. Uh, this does have some give to it because these are all cotton fabrics. So when it comes time to start ironing this, most of the time I've found that it flattens out just fine for angles like this. If not, you can always stretch it a little, pull it, and iron it flat. And then when you quilt over top of it, 
you won't even notice any puckering or anything. Or you could top stitch it now to have certain seams laying a little flatter when it comes to these diagonals. Looks like I can put a triangular piece in here and that's why I did cut some triangular pieces. So something like this could work. Another thing you could do, and I have done this before, is sew one of the seams and then fold under the other seam and then just fold it over and top stitch it instead of just sewing the seams. I've done that too. Hey, this is a crazy quilt. You do what you need to do. <laughs> but first I'm going to sew along this line. I'm going to stop right here at the intersection where this other fabric meets this fabric and then turn it and see if I can get those two seams to line up enough to sew them. Otherwise, like I said, I'll just turn this under and top stitch it on. So I'm turning this over, finger pressing. And so this is the seam I'm talking about. I think it's going to be easier for me to just fold this one under, have it overlap the other fabric a little bit, and just top stitch it on. You will never even be able to find this once you're finished with the Entar quilt. <laughs> you won't even know where it was that you did this because it all still just blends right in. Okay, so see, that worked fine. And when I start ironing this piece, it's going to be nice and flat. Because these are all cotton fabrics, they will give a little bit. Okay, so now what I can do is just cut a straight line here, just to be easy on myself, and then make another piece that will fit in here. I'm going to cut it at this angle so I don't waste so much of the fabric that I have on there. Okay, so that cleans it up nice. I can do the same thing with this side to give myself a nice straight edge to piece other pieces onto. Okay, I'm going to start filling in this area. That looks like it, it can be a fairly square shape to fit in here. And I always have what I have done already in view so that I am reminded of the general shape I have to create and what colors are already here so I can choose the fabrics that go well with the ones that are on these adjoining pieces. Okay, so this was the piece I was just working on. I made it larger than I thought I needed I'm trying to fit it into this area right here. I'm going to lay this one on top of it so I have a line that I can cut so that these two will be sewn together. Okay, so I'll sew these two together. I'm trying to keep kind of a straight line here, so I want to line them up on this side. It's 
So these two have to be sewn at this angle so that this is a straight line to meet up with this one. Okay, so that worked pretty well. I'm going to cut this a straight line and this one I'm going to follow this line. Okay, so let's work on a piece that will fit roughly in this area. Okay, so I ironed the pieces and they turned out really nice and flat. Except for this one that my seam had wobbled in the middle. And I can either top stitch it down. I think I'll just sew it again. After I do that, I'll make one more piece to fill in this section. And slowly but surely, it grows bigger and bigger. Okay, I wanted a straight line here. So this is how I positioned these pieces so I can eventually cut a straight line here to sew it onto this piece. And once again, just to remind you, you can make just uh, rectangular or square blocks out of scraps so you don't have to deal with diagonals as much as I'm doing on this quilt. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to sew this piece onto here. And because I want to keep the edge of this pocket showing, I'll need to first add a piece here so I have a little more to line up with this edge. I think I'll cut both of these to be a straight line. And now I can just flip this one and line it up and take it to the sewing machine. And now to sew these two pieces together, but first I want to clean up this edge. Okay, so I ironed it flat and it's laying nice and flat and I'm happy with it so far. Okay, so I'm just making some more panels of fabric so I can add them to the sides. So I just wanted to show you some of the piecing. So I have some pieces cut into more triangular pieces. And to try to make this a little more rectangular, if you use one triangle piece here, you can piece another triangle to be beside this triangle to try to make it more rectangular as you work. And here, I pieced these two pieces together to join with this piece here. At the top, I needed a width like this, so I'm just piecing smaller pieces all the way across, and I'll cut a straight line to join them onto this piece. So just giving you some ideas. But remember, this is a crazy quilt, so it's kind of like anything goes. 
Okay, so from this point, I'm going to be easy on myself, and I'm just going to cut all these outside edges as straight lines, like I did, and just keep adding on strips of pieced fabrics. Okay, so I'll stop here so you can see the piece I've been working on. So this one is kind of a wedge shape that I have to fill in. So I made this piece just now and I really love this. So this is nice because it's wider here than it is here. So I'm going to cut a straight line here so I can join this piece to this piece and then I'll trim off what I don't need at the bottom here so I have a lot of scraps to continue on with these other pieces. Okay, so I ironed it flat. It's looking great. Okay, so I'm slowly piecing for this area here, and I just need to make this long triangular piece. Okay, so while my camera was recharging, I made these two other pieces. One to go on this side, and one to finish off the top. As you can see, I didn't make all of them straight up and down. I pieced different pieces together to make the width I needed. So I'm just showing you this in detail to give you some ideas of how you can piece fabrics to get the shape you want. piece. Okay, so I'm finished with the fabric that I made out of scraps and I am happy with it. The dimensions of the pillow that I'm covering are 20 by 21. So I made the scrap fabric 22 by 23, adding two inches to allow for seams and shrinkage too. I added this one and a half inch border from this remnant piece of fabric that I had used as the binding in my crazy quilt for the couch. So they tie in together. And I do like that contrast. So I'll be making this pillow cover in my next video I want to wait for my next video because I'm also going to free motion quilt it and I'll walk through the process in my next video for anyone who is interested in seeing that. So I hope in this video that you got some inspiration about using your scraps in new interesting ways and I wanted to show some techniques about piecing the scraps together too. So I hope that helped. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer. 
And thanks for watching. If I can ask you to please give this video a thumbs up, that really helps my channel to grow. Until next week, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.